Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this realistic looking 3D elephant cake. So let's get right into it. I'm starting out with this template that I've made for myself and I will link the one that I use below. I need to deconstruct my template, so I'm going to cut the legs off and then the head and the ears. That sounds super morbid, I know, but you gotta do it. I've rolled out some gray fondant, a little on the thicker side. You want to make sure this isn't too thin, and I'm going to cut out each of my pieces using my X-Acto knife. You can see I'm leaving a little bit extra on the leg portion. This is just so I have something to stick the head to when I attach it later on. Using my balling tool, I'm marking in three dents on the bottom of each feet for the nails. Using my template as a guide, I'm marking out all the pre-existing lines on my template, and then I'm going to go over that with my fondant tool. I'm using my finger to go over each of the lines and I just want to create a little more dimension because I want this to look like the legs are in the front and in the back. So I'm rubbing that down, just trying to create more of a 3D look. Next, I'm taking my X-Acto knife and adding texture to my elephant. They have lines and cracks all over their skin. So I'm just going one way with my lines. And then once I have the whole thing covered, I'm going back in, just adding a couple marks going the other way. So it looks like there's these little squares all over the place. You want to make sure that you mix up the texture. To add even more, I have this little ball of crinkled up aluminum foil and I'm just pressing that lightly over the whole thing. Next, I'm going to cut the ears out. I rolled my fondant thicker for this because I want the top of the ear to be quite thick. You can see I've given myself a little extra room and I'm taking my fondant roller and just thinning out the edges, not the top, just the sides and the bottom. Once I've thinned out those edges, I'm recutting out the ear and then using my fondant tool and my template as a guide to mark in all of the texture, just like I did the body. I'm making the ears look a little more ragged at the bottoms, but you don't want to have like big tears or anything. And this is what it looked like when it was done. And I grabbed my X-Acto knife and my fondant tool and just marked the texture up just like the body. For the head, again, I've cut my fondant a little on the thicker side, and then I'm marking in all of the features and going over those with my fondant tool. You need to do a little more work with the head because it's the foremost piece. So there's lots of dents and little crevices in the top of the elephant's head. And then it was a little bit of work for me to smooth down the trunk and then have the spaces where the tusks would come out. And I marked in little divots for the eye sockets. It took me a little bit of time to do this, but you can get there. And I think the end result looked really good. I added two small ovals of white fondant for the eyes and then framed those with little snakies of gray fondant just for like the lid. Just like the rest of the body, I added the texture and then for the most part, the sculpting side of it was finished. I wanted to see how the whole thing looked put together. So using my template as a guide, I just laid the pieces on top of each other. I didn't put any water or shortening to stick them together. I just wanted to lay them down. So I started with the body and then used my template to place down the ears next and the head over top of that. 
Rolling out little balls of white fondant, I push those into the divots I made for the nails. So this is what Beatrice looked like at this point. I had named her Beatrice and I just went over and finagled any last little details. To make her really come to life, it was time to add some shading. So I had this black color dust and a fluffy brush. I started to add some really concentrated black like under the tops of her ears, anywhere there'd be a shadow. So underneath the sides of her head and the trunk, and all those deep crevices, you want to make sure those are the darkest points on the elephant. Then I gave the whole thing a light brushing and just went again around all of the points. This took me about a half hour just going over everything. If you put too much black in one spot, you can blow it out just by rubbing over it a couple times. And you can see like once you start dusting, it really brings out all that texture that you put down. I used a finer tipped brush to go around the eye sockets and just go back over all of those cracks and crevices. I rolled out two long banana shapish pieces of white fondant for the tusk and just gently tucked them under. Elephant's eyes are pretty concealed, so I wasn't too worried about getting the pupils spot on. I just took a little bit of black food coloring, really diluted, and just dotted that into the center of the eye. The last little detail was the tail, so I cut that out with my X-Acto knife and then frayed out the edges for the hair. I already have my cake iced and covered in fondant. If you need to see how to do either of those things, I will link that down below. And just like I put my elephant together before on my piece of parchment, I'm starting with the body and I'm attaching this with a little bit of shortening. So if it's not right the first time, I have more movability than I would if I used water. For the ears, I want the edges to not be pressed against the cake on the outside because I want them to kind of stick out a bit and look all full and luxurious. If you flatten them against the cake, it can kind of make the elephant look a bit derpy. Finally, I'm adding the head and at this point you can kind of move the trunk around so it's curled a bit more. You don't want it to be like straight down. I popped the tail on with a little bit of water and then slid both of the tusks into place. And just to make the whites of the eye pop a little bit more, I added some white food coloring gel around the pupil. And Beatrice is pretty much done at this point. You could leave her just like this. I wanted to add a little more detail to jazz her up a bit. So I'm taking more of that white food coloring gel on a fine tip paintbrush and I'm just going to start marking out a design on her head. I did use a reference for this so I will link it below. Once I had like faintly sketched it on there, I went over it again a little bit thicker. I just did this piece by piece. You can see as I go along, a little bit of this was just freehanded. You could really do whatever design you want. To give the cake itself some color, I took purple, pink, orange, and yellow food coloring gels and mixed them with a little bit of food grade alcohol. I used vodka, you could also use lemon extract. I started with purple for the top and I'm just stippling that on and then dragging that over the edge a little bit. Next I use pink. You really want to make sure that you blend that seam where the purple and pink meet. You don't want to have a harsh line there. You want it to have like a gradient effect as you work down. I added some orange and then yellow for the bottom and I took the yellow down on the board. I didn't show it here but I did do it as an afterthought.
To tie in the white on the elephant, I took more of my white food coloring gel with the back of a paintbrush and just dotted that over the entire cake. Different size dots, you wanna mix it up and you wanna make sure that you add them in between those little glimpses of color between the elephant's legs as well. You don't have to do this next step, but I wanted a little pop of gold on there, so I took some edible gold leaf and brushed each of the tusks before placing that down and then used my paintbrush just to guide that and wrap it around the whole thing. And here she is all finished. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for my channel. I put out new videos every week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.